he cried with such intensity that Imam Malik said, I had mercy on him. Although this is a hadith about wudu, we're also going to look at the isnad of this hadith. And that's going to give us some insights into spiritual abuse and who to trust for taking knowledge from. And we'll also learn about Musaylimah the liar. رَوَى مَالِكٌ عَنْ أَيُّوبَ بْنِ أَبِي تَمِيمَةَ السَّخْتِيَانِ عَنْ محمد بن سيرين أن عمر بن الخطاب كان Before we look at the hadith, I want to pause for a moment and look at the chain of transmission. Imam Malik narrates this hadith from Ayyub ibn Abi Tamima al sakhtiyani And he was not a Medinan. He was from Basra. And Ayyub narrates this hadith from Muhammad ibn Sirin, who was also from Basra. And so this chain of transmission is unusual. Because in the Muatta, Imam Malik conveys the knowledge of the people of Medina. He conveys hadith from his teachers who were in Medina, who studied with their teachers, because Medina was the place where the Prophet lived and taught and died, and he left behind the companions, and they taught their followers, and it was a place where there was no bid'ah, and they were upon the sunnah, and it was a place of piety, and they practiced the deen, and they were knowledgeable. So it was a center of knowledge. And so Imam Malik was the greatest scholar of Medina, which tells you something about his knowledge. And so when, he's, when, he, when, he, when he narrates hadith, he narrates from the people of Medina. And, uh, and he didn't, uh, Imam Malik doesn't, doesn't travel to other places to, uh, to learn hadith. People travel to him from all over the world to, to learn hadith. But this hadith, he's narrating from, from somebody who's from Basra. He's narrating from somebody, who's some, somebody from Basra. So, uh, so now uh, there are a number of things to consider here. The first is that the reason, one of the reasons why Imam Malik only narrated from the people of Medina is because Imam Malik is very careful about the hadith that he narrates. He doesn't narrate a hadith just from anyone. So if somebody stands up in the masjid and they, um, they start, uh, they start, uh, you know, they, they're very eloquent. They say something from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imam Malik, if he doesn't know that person, he's not going to take hadith from him. He's not going to transmit from him. He wants to know the person. He wants to know if the person is reliable. How do you know if the person is reliable? How do you know if, a, um, if somebody of religious learning from whom you're taking knowledge, somebody whose lecture you watch on YouTube, somebody you follow on social media, somebody who you intend an intensive retreat with, how do you know that they are trustworthy and you can take knowledge from them? How do you know? Well, how would Imam Malik know? Imam Malik, he got to know the people. He visited them in their houses. He spent time with them. He watched them buying and selling in the marketplace. He asked other people about them. And they were, he knew how they lived their private lives. And he, after all of these things, he came to know that this person is an upright person. They're reliable. I can take religious knowledge from them. I will narrate hadith from him. I'll put them in a senate. I'll, I'll mention it in the Muatta. The fact that Imam Malik narrates a hadith in the Muatta means from anyone, it means he's done his homework. This is what he did. This is what the Muhaddithin did. So it's when Ayyub al sakhtiyani he's coming from Basra, how come he's narrating from him? And they asked him. One of the ulama, they asked uh, the Prophet, the, they asked Imam Malik, um, he, he, he was asked, Imam Malik was asked, Su'ila Malik, Mata sami'ata an Ayyub al-Sakhtiyani? He said, when did you hear hadith from Ayyub al-Sakhtiyani? You're not even from Medina. He said that hajja hajjatayn, he, made to, he did hajj twice. So he came all the way from Basra, and he made hajj, and then he came to visit the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina. And Imam Malik saw him, and he did it again. He said, Hajja Hajjatain. He said, Fakuntu Armuku. He said, I used to look at him. La asma'u minhu. But I didn't take any hadith from him. Because I don't know him. 
right? I used to look at him. Why he was uh, he was known. He was known for a he was famous, but he didn't like to be famous. And I'll I'll tell you some something about Ayub. But he said he's famous, everybody knows him. This Ayub was Saqtiani, he's come all the way from Musra, he's this great scholar. Imam Malik, he said, I used to look at him. La asma I didn't take hadith from him. I don't know him. He said, he said, but then I saw him and he mentioned the Prophet and he started crying until I had mercy on him. So he narrated hadiths and he, and when the name of the Prophet was mentioned, he couldn't, he would stop speaking and he would cry, not just a tear or two, but he cried with such intensity that Imam Malik said, I had mercy on him. I thought something was going to happen to him. Like, I wanted to console him. So he said, Imam Malik said that, that uh, he said that, فَلَمَّا رَأَيْتُ مِنْهُ مَا رَأَيْتُ وَإِجْلَالَهُ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كَتَبْتُ عَنْهُ He said that when I saw this from him, and I saw how much he venerated the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then I wrote hadith from him. And that's why you find in the Muwatta of Imam Malik, in the Riwayah of Yahya bin Yahya Al-Layfi, you find two hadiths. He, he, two hadiths from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Imam Malik narrates from Ayyub ibn Abi Tamima as sakhtiyani So we, there's a, um, in other Riwayahs of the Muwatta, there's two more. But, uh, but uh, there's, what, what, do, what do we take from here? What we take from here is that when there is, when you let, um, you could watch a lecture on YouTube, you can be moved by, what's, by, by what you hear, and you can benefit from it. But you should, you should refrain from giving judgment on anyone, on anyone, until you know them, or you know somebody who knows them, until you know their private life, until you know how they are with their wife and their children and their friends, and you've lived with them, until then, you refrain from, you, 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 you refrain, you refrain, because you don't know. You don't know. And, um, and uh, watching somebody on YouTube, or going even even here, like you come here, what do you know about me? Like some of you I know for a long time, right? But many of you don't know anything about me, except the fact that you come here. So what should you do? You refrain. You refrain. You take what you benefit, but am I a good person? Am I not a good person? You don't know, right? So our problem is that we now, we, we see somebody, we attend a lecture, we're moved, and we think that the person who we learned, who we learned from is, a, is, is, is so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it encompasses everything. We're thinking about them. We're talking about them. We say they're so, they're, they're so amazing. We, we follow everything. We do this. And then something happens. Something happens. And, and then it affects people's religion because they say they lose hope in religion, because they placed all their hopes in somebody who they didn't even know. They didn't even know. So, so you, you should, you, you, you have to, Imam, Imam Malik wasn't like that. Imam Malik, Abu, uh, no, uh, Imam Malik, Ayyub al sakhtiyani he is famous for his knowledge and his piety. He comes all the way from Basra. He's from Kabul, by the way. He was born in Kabul. He's, um, he was uh, Kabul, Islam reached Kabul in the time of the companions. Right? So, and he was, he was one of the, um, he was taken as a prisoner, as a child, and he was raised, he became a scholar. So, Ayyub uh, Abi Tamima as sakhtiyani he, Imam Malik sees him, he watches him, he doesn't take hadith from him until he sees something. And what does he see? He sees this weeping at the mention of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and not just a tear or two, anybody can shed a crocodile tear, but he, he sees something that is involuntary. It's a strong sign that, that, okay, so this is confirmation of what other people are saying. He respects the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll take hadith from him. And even then, he only takes two. 
in the entire Murta, he only narrates two. And the hadith that he narrated are hadiths that the thing that he's saying is well known. Uh, so, so, uh, so, uh, Ayyub ibn Abi Tamim al-Sakhtiyani, he was known for, people used to talk about him, and I, and they said many things about him. And one of the things they said about him, that I, they used to say he prayed Qiyamul Layn, and, uh, you know, he worshipped, he did all these things. But there are a couple of things that stood out to me. One of the things that they said about him, they said, one of his students, they said, مَا رَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا قَطُّ said, I never saw anyone who smiled more in the faces of men than Ayyub. So what does that mean? It means he's easygoing. It means that when you spend time with him, he smiles with you, he's, he jokes with you. He, he, he's not someone who um, frowns and expects you to respect him and is critical of other people. And this is a sign. So when you see someone who's like that, it's a sign that there is, that, that there might be something that's wrong. So um, people who, are, uh, who, aren't, uh, who aren't affable, who don't spend time with other people, um, who don't, um, that's, there's a sign. Of, and he said, he said, لَا خَبِيثَ أَخْبَثْ مِنْ قَارِئٍ سَاجِرٍ He said, there's no, there's no, there's, there's nothing, there's no, uh, there's nothing, Worse, Khabith is more than bad. It's like terrible. There's nothing more terrible. There's nothing more terrible than a Quran reciter who is a who is a corrupt person. So there's so why obviously like we all know, we all know, but it's important to note that. This was a pheno- This is a phenomenon that has existed since the time of the teachers of Imam Malik. It's a, it's 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 a, it has a it ha- it's a long it has a long history. It, this happens, right? And so so um, so what do we do? Well, there's a number of things we can do. One of the things we can do is we when we when we benefit from people. We listen to we, we listen to useful lectures on YouTube. If we watch something useful on social media. We attend classes, but until you know somebody, you 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 say I don't know that person. So somebody comes to you and says, you know, this person came to me and he wants to borrow money from me. So you don't say he has a million followers on YouTube. He's a great person. It's okay. You say I don't know. It's because you don't know him. So, so, uh, so Imam Malik, he narrates this hadith from Ayyub ibn Abi Tamim al-Sakhtiyani, who is from Basra, and he came to do Hajj. And Imam Malik, you know, he watched him until he was satisfied. And he said, okay, now, uh, now let's see what you got. Okay? <laughs> and so then, he, and this is one of the things he took from him. He says, An Ayyub ibn Abi Tamim al-Sakhtiyani, عن محمد بن سيرين the famous interpreter of dreams أن عمر بن الخطاب كان في قوم وهم يقرؤون القرآن that Umar ibn al-Khattab he was with a people and they were, rec- they were reciting the Quran so um, Sayyidina Umar um, he is there's companions there's others and they're gathering and there's the voices of people reciting Quran and Sayyidina Umar is among them this was something they used to do, right? So the sounds of Quran recitation, gatherings of Quran recitation. And so he went to, um, to the bathroom to relieve himself. So he used the bathroom and he hasn't made wudu yet. And as he's coming back, he's reciting the Quran. Because they're all getting together, they're reciting the Quran. It's a gathering of Quran recital. He's reciting the Quran. فَقَالَ لَهُ رجل. A man said to him, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, Ataqra ul Quran walasta ala wudu. He said, Oh, Amir al Mu'mineen, O oh, Khalifa of the Muslims, do you, are you reciting the Quran and you're not on wudu? And he said this in a, um, in a, in a reprimanding voice. He was reprimanding Sayyidina Umar. Ataqra ul Quran walasta ala wudu. And so, so Sayyidina Umar said to him, who gave you this fatwa? 
that you're not allowed to recite the Quran in wudu. Was it Musaylima? Why did he say this? He said this because this person who said this to him was used to be a follower of Musaylima. Musaylima al-Kazzab. Musaylima al-Kazzab, he, towards the end of the mission of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wrote a letter to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, he wrote a letter, min Musaylima Rasulillah ila Muhammad Rasulillah. He wrote a letter from Musaylima, the Messenger of Allah, to Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah. And he wrote a letter to the Prophet. He said, he said, um, he said, فَإِنِّي قَدْ أُشْرِكْتُ فِي هَذَا الْأَمْرِ معك. I have been made a partner in this affair with you. Meaning, I've also been made a prophet. You're a prophet, I'm also a prophet. Um, he said, وَإِنَّ لَنَا نِصْفَ الْأَرْضِ وَلِقُرَيْشٍ نِصْفَ الْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنَّ قُرَيْشٍ قُومٌ يَعْتَدُونَ So he is from what happened during the end of the Prophet's mission. Um, the people of Mecca became Muslim. And when they became Muslim, everybody in the Arabian Peninsula became Muslim. And because the Prophet وسلم, is from the tribe of Quraysh, the tribe of Quraysh became prominent. It became important. It was already important, but it became even more important because now the Messenger of Allah is from Quraysh. It was a competing tribe. This competing tribe was Banu Hanifa. And Banu Hanifa, they were strong, they were, they, they were proud, and, um, and so they didn't like it. And so Musaylima is from Banu Hanifa, and he said, I'm a prophet too. And so he sent the prophet a letter saying that, you're a prophet, I'm a prophet. And, um, and, so, and, and, and so the prophet, so, and so he said this to the prophet, the prophet received the letter, and then there were two messengers that came with the letter. He said, what do you guys say? Um, they say, we believe in him. And the Prophet wasallam said, were it not for the fact that, that diplomats, messengers, emissaries are not killed, I would have killed you. So, but he didn't. Why? Because there, is a, there, are, there are conventions of diplomatic relations. Embassies have, have, uh, have, uh, they, have dip, they have protection. Embassies are protected. Diplomats are protected, and messengers are protected. They're representatives from another country. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he he didn't do anything, and he wrote a letter back. He said he wrote a letter back. He said, "Min Muhammad Rasulillah ila Musaylima al kazab from Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, to Musaylima the liar. And so it's very interesting the way that Musaylima wrote this, right? So what is, what is he saying? He's saying that I've been given this with you. I'm a prophet too. Half the earth is mine, half is yours. Meaning half to, for, 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 for Banu Hanifa, but half for Quraysh. So, وَلَكِنَّ Quray, قُرَيْشًا قُمَنْ يَعْتَدُونَ But Quraysh, they're like bad people because they're taking the whole thing. So it's really clear that what does he want? He's not saying, believe in me, I'm a prophet. He's saying, I want power. And he's saying, give me half, you take half, let's make a deal. And so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he didn't cut deals because he didn't come to cut deals. He came to call people to the truth. And so he said, "Min Muhammad Rasulillah ila Musaylim al Kazab." He said, "Amma baad, fa inna al arda lillahi yurithuha man yasha, wal aqibatu lil muttaqin." He said, "Verily, the earth belongs to Allah. He gives it to whoever He wills, and the aqiba, the end success in the next life, belongs to the people who fear Allah subhanahu wa taala." And uh, this is the response of a truthful person. And the, the letter, that, because he's not saying, well, it's all mine and who are you or anything. He said, it belongs to Allah. And, and, fear, and fear the akhirah. And um, this is also an example of where the Prophet wasallam he writes Quran, the words of the Quran, in, in a letter that's sent to somebody who, who is not even a Muslim. And that's okay because it's not Quran. He is saying this of himself. He is saying the words of the Quran of himself. So this man who corrected Sayyidina Umar, uh, he said, uh, he said he was, he used to be one of the followers of Musaylima. And there was a battle, uh, and a battle of Yamama. And, uh, and during the reign of Abu Bakr, the Muslims were victorious. Many companions died in that battle. 
and the and the Musaylima was 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 killed, and uh, his people were defeated, and his false religion ceased to exist. And so this man, he used to be from Musaylima, and then he became, and then he said that okay, I become Muslim. And then Sayyidina Umar went and he used the bathroom and he came back and he said to him that uh, Quran wa ala wudu. He's trying to correct Sayyidina Umar and, the, and so Sayyidina Umar says, did Musaylima give you this fatwa? And he's reminding him, he's reminding him listen, like, you know, like, watch who you are. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I kept the company of the Prophet. He, he didn't say this, but, but the meaning is like he's one of the closest companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's, this is not, this is not the way, like, you know, you, you should, you should be learning. You should be learning, not, not, uh, not objecting in this way. Um, and so we, uh, so to touch the Quran without wudu is not permissible, but to recite the Quran without wudu is permissible. You don't need wudu to recite the Quran. It's only impermissible to recite the Quran if you're in a state of janaba. So if, if somebody has a, uh, has a, uh, wet dream or sexual relations, then it's impermissible to recite the Quran by ijma'. Women who are in Hayd, in the three schools, it's impermissible. In the Maliki school, it's permissible for a woman in Hayd to recite the Quran, but not to, uh, but not to touch it. So somebody is reciting Quran for cure, for shifa, you mean? So the Quran is this miraculous expression through which we understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us in beginning, since beginningless eternity, in a timeless, timelessly. And so it is the speech of Allah, it's expressed using these words, and it is muta'abbad bi tilawatihi, which means that it is an act of worship to recite it. So when I pick up the Qur'an and I say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, this recitation is an act of worship. So when you, when you recite Quran for protection, so the Quran, the, the Quran recitation that is unlawful is, I say, I open up the Mus'haf and I say, Alif Lam Mim, Thalika Al Kitab La Raib, Yani Ata'abbadu Allaha Bi Tilawati Al Quran. I am, I am worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala by reciting the Quran. So I'm in the Shafi'i school, and this is in the Shafi'i school, if the, if the words of the Qur'an are recited for some other purpose, like for example, for protection. So reciting, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ for protection. If they're recited for protection, it's not, it's not the same as reciting the Qur'an for tilawa in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And similarly for cure and shifa would be the same, would be the same thing. You're reciting it for this. It's not being done in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bit tilawa. Other, other scholars would differ, but that's the Shafi'i position. <laughs>